Hello guys, uh, today we're going to do a UDK tutorial on how to create four different types of bots within UDK. Here's just a finished product which I, which I finished earlier. I'll just show you the kismet very quickly for that. Um, it's very simple, this is just a basic bot. It'll spawn, try to kill you. This one is spawned after trigger is activated. This one will respawn and this one will respawn but has a limited amount of lives. Now don't worry about it just yet, I'm going to show you exactly how I did each one step by step. I'm just going to open the level that I prepared earlier. Just two things before we get into it. Your level that you're putting bots into must be 5000 by 5000 large. You see here, just right click on the cube, you can see here it's 256, you can change that to 5000 by 5000. It must be at least 5000, otherwise the level will not work, the bots will not work on the level rather. Um, and one more point is that we must have a game mode set for the bots to spawn and work. So we go to view and we go to world properties and we come down here to where it says game type and we open the little drop down and we set a game type. Uh, UT game and UT deathmatch here are sufficient for this. Okay, so now that we've done those two things we can actually begin. Now I've set up the level to split off into four sections. You can just have one giant 5000 by 5000. This is just for the tutorial. Now we'll start over here. The first thing you need for a bot is you're first going to need a path node. So you right click and you go to add actor and you come over and here's add path node. So you just click there and you've got your path node. Now you have to be careful sometimes that these path nodes don't spawn in the ground. You see here, I'll just demonstrate, they spawn on the ground and there's a black square that says bad size. This means that the path node will not spawn anything at it and it just won't work. So just make sure it doesn't say bad size, drag it up out of the ground or away from anything that might be blocking it. Okay, the next step is to open up Kismet and just to right click and add new object variable using path node 0. That path node there, that could be path node 1, 2, 3, depending on how many you've used. Next thing is to add an actor factory. And to do that we right click and go to new action, go to actor, actor factory. Now we actually have to set up the actor factory. This is what drives the bot really. So we come down into its uh, act actor factory, the into its properties, into act actor factory. See, so there's three drop downs. You click into this one, and we come to this factory setting here. Now it's set to none at the moment, so we click on this blue drop down, and we select the UT actor factory AI. This is what we need for the actual AI to work. Then a little drop down will appear next to factory here. We click on that. Then we check force deathmatch AI, and then we also set a pawn class, the force deathmatch AI. Make sure that the bot actually attacks you and will behave hostile. The pawn class just makes it so it is a bot. And then we give it a default inventory so that it actually will have a gun to attack you with. Now, the next step is to connect the path node to the spawn point. But before we do that, it's a good idea just to copy this, control C, select your act factory and control C, and copy this twice as we'll need it for the next bots as well. The exact same ones, so it's just a good idea to copy them. Then we can multi-select these by holding control and clicking on both and just dragging them off to the side. Okay, so now we're free to hook up the spawn point. So now this bot will spawn a path node zero. Now we need to actually initiate the spawn and to do that we need a level loaded block. So we just right click, new event, uh, sorry, new act, it is new event, sorry. New event, level loaded. And see here's level loaded invisible. When the level is loaded invisible, we want to spawn actor at path node zero. And that is our first bot. So I'm just going to comment that quickly. To multi-select like I am here, you just hold down control and alt and then drag, click and drag. Let's drag over and it multi-selects everything. And then to add a comment, you press C. And I'm going to mark each of these by lights. And I'm going to mark this one with a green light. So I'm just going to call it green basic bot. You can call it whatever you want, you don't even have to add lights, it's just my own way of marking it. So now I'm just going to minimise Kismet, and here you can see our, our little path node. Here I'm just going to add in a point light over here so I can actually see it from the spawn area. So it's just add actor, right click add actor, point light. I'm just going to drag that up, and then I'm going to press F4 to get into its properties to be able to change them. Also you can alternatively just right click on the light and you can go to point light properties. So then you come into the light, light component, these are two drop downs, and then you come down to light component within light component. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the brightness here to 10 and the color here to green. That way from the spawn I'm going to be actually able to see this is the area with the 
green colored bot as in the basic bot. So I'm going to drag this over a little bit. Okay, that's going to do it. So now I'm just going to build everything because I have paths and lighting to rebuild. It's a good idea just to build everything. It'll pop up in the background there. This can take various amounts of times depending on how good your system is. And if it's a system like this, it's only 32 bit I'm working off at the moment. It can take quite some time to even do the simplest builds. So jump in, there we go, getting some sound. There's our guy. Oh, missed it. It's a bit laggy at the moment, it's just the system isn't exactly optimized. And he dodged the shot. Okay. So that's the first bot all set up and ready. That's the first bot. Now the next thing to do is to get another path node. Now alternatively to clicking and adding path nodes every time, we can just click on the original path node and then hold Alt once it's selected and then just drag it over to make a copy of the path node. This will be then path node 1. You see here it's a bad size because it was dragged over into the ground. Just drag it up a small bit and there it's out of it. Now with your path node selected we go into Kismet again and we'll just come to a little bit of a new area. And we'll, first of all we'll just drag away one of these actor factories because we only need one. And then we'll right click and we'll create a new object variable using path node 0. Although I may have selected the wrong one, I'll just make sure that's the right one. Is that it? That is path node 0. Just to be sure, we don't want to be making this mistake. And we'll select this one and press properties again, that's path node 1. So in fact, I may have I may have to swap these path nodes uh, because the path node, as you can see here, is for path node 1. So actually it is fine, I, I thought that might have been path node 0, so we're okay. So just create a new object variable using path node 0 once we select it again. You have to be careful of that, that you don't uh, double up on the spawn points. You're not trying to spawn two bots at the same point. That can really mess with it. So then we'll just uh, connect spawn point to this. And now we want to spawn this bot by the activation of a trigger. So we'll just minimize Kismet. And we'll come over to here. The trigger here should be good enough. So we'll right click here and we'll go to add actor. And then you come into add actor and you come down to add trigger. Click there. You can see the trigger is quite small to begin with. We can just press F4 and come into the trigger here and trigger component and then sorry cylinder component and you'll see here there's a height and a radius now we want to change the height to about 80 so that the player can't just jump over it and I'm going to change this to about 1000 for radius uh, just by the measurements of my map I know exactly how big I need it to make sure that they can't get into the area this could obviously be different for yours and you can see here it covers that area nicely with this little green circle here so as soon as they trigger this it should activate this so we'll go back into Kismet so we can set that up. So to set that up we need to right click and you see here it's a new event using trigger and we want it to be activated upon the trigger being touched so it's once the trigger is touched see here once the trigger is touched we want to spawn the actor and that is our second bot complete. I'll just comment that quickly again control and alt to multi select and then C to add a comment. Uh, I'm going to make the light in this area yellow so it's just going to be yellow trigger bot. Okay, there we go, that's our second bot ready to go. I'm just going to drag this down so I remember that it's down here for the next bot. And I'm going to quickly just drag across the light so I can mark the area. And again, we can just hold Alt and drag. I missed the Alt there, I'm just going to drag one back. Drag it back to there and hold Alt again. There we go. Now again, once with the light selected, we can just press F4 to get into the properties to change the color. Just click and click again and OK and exit this and the color has changed. Now we'll just jump into the level after we build the pathing and lights just to make sure that that works. And as I said before the build takes relative time to how good your system is. So we'll play the game. We'll get the sound again and then we go. come in. No bot. And bot. There we go. There's a bot. Trying to kill me. We'll just jump out. We'll not even bother trying to fight him. Okay, so the next type of bot that we're going to work on is a bot that can respawn. Now this one is uh, pretty much similar to the original one, just with a few different blocks added. Now we're just going to right click and add a path node. Add actor, add path node. And then with the path node selected, go back into Kismet. Right click, new object variable using path node 2. And we can just hold control and drag it down here. That's how we drag things within Kismet, otherwise you'll just be dragging everything around. 
and then we'll connect that to the spawn point. So where we're going to be spawning the actor at path node 2. Then we're going to add in a level loaded, right click, go to new event, level loaded. So the actual actor will be spawned. And now this is where it differs from the first one. We need to add in an attach to event block here. So we go to right click, new action, event, attach to event. This is so we can hook up our bot to another event. You see here it says attach E. Now we can't attach the attach E to this because this is a spawn point. We need something to represent the bot as in something that was spawned by this. And to do that we come to this little triangle, we right click on it and we create new object variable. Now this object variable now represents the bot that was spawned by this actor factory. This can be used for many different things. In this case it's going to be used to help it respawn. So then you hook up this variable here to the attach E of the attach to event. Just quickly connect that. And we're going to add the event of death to this. And to get that we go right click, new event, pawn, and death. See here now we have death. Now we're going to hook up death to this. Now what we're going to do is every time the bot dies we want it to come out and respawn a new actor. A new bot. A new bot will be spawned every time, a bot di every time this bot spawned here dies. Now we don't want it to respawn inst instantaneously so it's a good idea just to add a bit of a delay here and to do that we come to this black box here and we right click and we set active delay and just make that about five seconds that'll that should be good enough now quickly I'm just going to comment this I'm just going to make this one a red light so C for comment and then I'm just going to call it red respawn bot very good and again we're just going to close that we're going to build all and then we're going to jump in and test if it works of course I have to add in a light afterwards. Uh, I'll add it in once I'm finished my test. So play. So it's this area here. You can see there he is. Let's get a bit closer. First blood. Very loud. Now we're just going to wait for him to respawn. There we go. And he'll respawn infinitely. Now, just quickly before we go on to the next one, I'm just going to drag over this light by holding Alt and dragging across again. And then I'm going to press F4 to get into the properties, and I'm going to add it to be about red. Uh, sorry for any background noise, I don't know if you can hear that, but it is quite noisy here. Uh, now, to finish off with the last bot. The, na the last bot that we're going to do is going to be a bot that has a limited amount of spawns. Now, to get that, we're going to just drag across the light again just so I don't forget in the next time and I'm just going to go to F4 properties and change it to be a blue light just this time just so I don't forget later on now first thing we do now is we add a path node like as I said before we can add in all the paths at the beginning but I find that can get confusing sometimes and you can sometimes mix up the numbers uh, and it can just get generally confusing so I just add them in each for the tutorial like this now, the next thing to do is, with the path node selected, go back in here to Kismet and just right click, new object variable using path node 3. Now, the reason we didn't copy and paste three of these actor factories from the original one was because the coding for this is extremely similar to the coding for the last one. So it's worth just holding Control and Alt. Oh, whoops, still kept that one selected. Just have nothing selected. Hold Control and Alt and just select all of this code. And then Control C and Control V and it saves actually quite a bit of time instead of having to just do out everything again. Uh, the only thing that you do really have to change is to click on the path node that is that is connected already and delete that one and connect up your new path node so that it's not trying to spawn at the same area as I said before or in the video. Now to make it so that it has only a limited amount of lives we need to add something called an int counter. So first thing we should do is break this so that when they die they just don't instantly respawn. Now to get the int counter we right click, we go to new condition Go to counter and int counter. Okay, now we attach the death out. We leave the delay, the delay on there. It's good to have that delay. And we bring that to the end of the int counter. Now the int counter will check the value of A against the value of B. Of course, we have to add those and set it and set them up. So the first thing we do is right click and we create new int value variable. Sorry. Uh, default they're both set to zero. See here, create another one. Let's just right click on the little blue squares and you can create them. You can't now, but you can. 
and you see down here in the properties that they you can change the values here now I'm going to change the value of B to 2 um, and I'll explain that now in a moment why I do that you see every time that the int counter every time that the int counter is come into it increments by 1 it uh, plus it adds 1 to A it adds 1 to A and then we check the value of A against B and what I'm going to do now is every time that A is less than B and it comes into here I want it to spawn an actor so that is effectively how it will respawn it will come in here after the bot has finished after the bot has finished spawning if it comes to the event death if it dies it will come into the int counter the int counter will increase by one and then it will respawn a new actor if the int value of A is not is less than the value of B so that's it. That's it. That's how we get to get a limited spawn done. Now I'm just going to add in a little announcement here to tell the player when the bot has finished its auto spawns. So I'm going to right click, new action, voice slash announcements down here right at the bottom, and play announcement. Now I'm going to hook this up to A is equal to B. So when A is equal to 2, that means that, that the int counter has been incremented twice, meaning that it has come into it twice, meaning the bot has died once. It's uh, it has to be one higher than you actually want the response to be, just uh, a note there. Now come into the announcement uh, text. This announcement will play in the middle of the screen. I'm just going to go enemy, all enemies defeated. Good. So that will play when A is equal to B. Now I'm just going to quickly comment this. Comment. Now we'll call this the blue limited bot very good now we're going to minimize kismet we're just going to build all shouldn't take too long as I've done two previous builds there we go you can just ignore these errors as they aren't important at the moment and we can just hit play game very good so we'll go into our blue area there's our bot, we'll just fire on him. Just kill him once more, and we should get the announcement that he won't respond. Now we should get the announcement in a moment that he has no lives left. There it is, all enemies defeated. Now as you see, he has, he has his original spawn and his second spawn. And that's it guys, that's every thing you need to know to actually create four different types of bots within UDK. Uh, thanks for watching and please check out more videos on the online design teacher YouTube channel.